tapping techniques today and just do some real basic stuff to get you started but also just give you a little insight into some of the trick things you can do um, just to sort of you know make it more interesting quickly anyway the real sort of secret of tapping is how you deal with this hand um, a lot of people kind of just kind of tap like this the, their arm is just in midair and they're just hitting the fingerboard and there's no control what you want to do is consider this hand in the same way as you consider your normal fretting hand in that you know you want to be guided around the fingerboard by your thumb that also steadies you gives you the strength and that's what you want to do with this hand too so when you're doing some tapping you actually want to get a strong fretted note all right so it's an actual fretted note not just a percussive hit and you want to be able to control it so now we'll look at some of the little tricks we can do um, one thing that people sort of kind of get stuck on is the idea of just tapping with one finger. So let's have a look at some multiple finger tapping to start off with. So I'm going to put this somewhere useful and do this. <laughs> actually playing there is quite simply a G major or E minor pentatonic. Starting on the A to the B to the D to the E to the G to the A. And then I'm tapping a D, something else, a G. <laughs> And a B, which, if you notice, are all actually within the, the left hand notes that I'm playing. So I'm not playing extra notes, I'm just playing duplicates in new locations on the fingerboard. And then what I'm doing finger order wise is I'm using my index finger to start, and then I'm using my third finger for the G, and then my second finger or middle finger for the B. And that means I can basically play like a D chord shape without actually moving my hand around. Sounds pretty devastating and it's very, very effortless because I'm not having to move around. I'm not scrambling to get one finger to move around. So that's one idea for you to deal with. Um, another little idea to get into is tapping and sliding notes. Okay, let's do a little example in A minor here. Okay, now what I'm doing here is I'm tapping a G, pulling off to a C, hammering on a D, then I'm tapping the G again, but then sliding up to an A, and then back to the G again. off and hammering again. Then exactly the same pattern on the B string. And again, really cool effect. And then one other thing to get into is what Joe Satriani calls the hammer-ons from out of nowhere. Most of the time when we're tapping, the tapping note is the sort of initiator. It's the starter of every string. It's replacing almost the pink note. You know, if you think of that sort of typical Van Halen-esque triplet tap pull hammer pattern. The first note that I play on everything is the tap. Tap pull hammer. So what if the tap was last? Simple difference. So I'm going to start with, like I say, hammer off from out of nowhere. I'm going to play this in E, and this is kind of an E Dorian lick. We'll explain these modes and stuff later. But I'm going to play an E with a hammer on. Then I'm going to hammer on an F sharp. I'm going to come right up here and play a B with my tapping finger. 
I'm going to repeat that physical shape on the next two strings. So the tapping note is lost each time. I'm going to have a slightly different pattern here. That's a cool little effect. So, the other thing that I can do, which obviously a single hand can't do, is cover seven frets, you know, with ease. Move around. By doing that with one hand.